Hey, let's talk about how the TBT Organizer plugin sort process works and how you can customize it to your liking. This video is very much a part two to the introduction video, so definitely check that out if you haven't. Other than that, let's get into it. The first important concept to understand is that when you drag a stem into Ableton, a new track is created with the track number and the whole name of a stem. It doesn't even fit on the track title bar, but it is there. If you try to edit the name and scroll through with the arrow keys, it will reveal it. Now, each algorithm on the TBT track organizer is parsing through that track name, looking for a match. So for example, on this BGV track, we're gonna focus on the clip name, but it's actually looking at the track name and asking, is there a kick here? Is there a snare here? Is there a snare spelled this way here? And on and on, and then it says, ooh, there's a BV in here. That matches one of our keywords for BGVs. So then based on the settings that I've chosen, it will rename and color code the track and clips as necessary. So just to demonstrate that, that's why when I use the update selected button, which I mapped to the letter Q on my keyboard in the last video, it sees the BV in the track name, identifies it as a BGV track, then it renames the track, color codes the track, and in Live 11 and above, it colors any of the clips as well. The same process happens on a larger scale for the other two functions. They go through every track, looking for and finding keywords. And if they find a match, it updates based on the settings. Amazingly, it does this in a matter of a second. It's only the moving of the tracks that takes more time. That's why update all is so quick and update all and move is fast, but you can actually blink a few times before it's finished. Now, all of this data that it needs to make these decisions is contained in what I'm calling a sort file. The sort file contains all of the data an algorithm needs to identify a track, to color code it, and to put it in the order that you choose. Let me show you what I mean. You can see I'm using the file that comes with the plugin called defaultkeywords.json. We can edit this file using the built-in sort file editor. Let me just click load and choose default keywords. Now this is a big file and it actually gets bigger, but don't worry. It doesn't need to be this complicated. Plus, you can just modify this one to your liking and get sorting quickly as well. Now, these are not the actual keywords that are being searched for, they are groups of keywords. Notice how it says group name above each text field. The groups just make life easier and help keep things organized. I'm assuming if you're interested in this plugin, you like being organized or at least the idea of it. Let's take a look at the click and cues group since that's a pretty simple one to start with. Expanding the click and cues group, you can see we have two items in the list, one for click and one for cues. In case you don't know, a click is just a metronome and a cue is a recording of a voice that helps direct a performer or band through a performance. If you wanna know more, check out my custom click and cues product. The content there will get you up to speed on how they work. Now, if you haven't noticed already, there is a section under the click keyword called keywords to match. I know it's a little confusing, the keywords have keywords, but hopefully it makes sense here soon. The keywords to match are the actual keywords the sorting algorithm uses. So in this case, it looks at the track name and it checks, is the word click in the name? Then it checks, is the word metronome in this name? And I shortened it to just metron because I figure that's enough of a match and it won't conflict with the other keywords. If it does find a match, it's gonna rename it click because that's the name to assign and for the color, it's gonna use the group color, which in this case is white. We can see the cues keyword is not using the group color and is instead using light gray. If you wanna change the color, all you need to do is click on the name and a familiar but more detailed color palette pops up to choose from. Just simply choose the desired color, then click confirm choice. Okay, let's collapse our click and cues group and I wanna go investigate the BGV track we looked at earlier. But as we scroll down, I wanna talk about order. Changing the order of the groups and the keywords is not just for aesthetic reasons. Notice that our organized tracks follow the same order as the groups. We don't have reference or click tracks, but we do have drums, and so they come first and they are color-coded black. We didn't have any specific loop or percussion tracks, but we did have bass tracks, so those come next. We didn't have brass, strings, or woodwinds, but we did have synthesizers and keys. Then we have guitars in blue, and vocals in yellow, and so on. Let's open up that vocals group and find the BGV keyword we talked about at the beginning of this video. We can see it lives right in the middle of the group and it has BV as one of the keywords to match. So just to recap, it looked through the track name, it found the keyword BV, so it renamed it BGV, and it colored it this shade of yellow. 
That's why the BGVs look different than the lead vocals. They are set to two different colors. Now, let's focus on the order again. Notice that the BGVs come before the lead vocals in the list of tracks. And if we look at the sort file, the BGVs come before the lead vocals as well. So hopefully you're starting to realize the order of your sort file will dictate the order your tracks are put into. If you want to change the order, you can do so using the change order buttons here, or even change the order of the entire group. There are crucial details to this though. When a sort algorithm is checking a track name, it starts at the very top of the sort file, in this first group called reference. Then it goes through each keyword one by one as I've explained before. It says, is the word refer here? Is the word prac track here? Is the word practice track here? Is the word rough here? And in the case of the BGV track that we started with, it continues that process all the way down till it reaches this BGV keyword. So the fact that it starts at the top and it works its way all the way down is the key. It's important to exploit this as you order your keywords. This is why in this vocal group, the generic kind of catch-all vocal keyword is at the bottom of the list. I want the sorting algorithm to try and find all the specific keywords first. For example, if there is a male vocal track and I want it to actually be named male vocal instead of just vocal, I need to make sure that the keyword is above the more generic keyword in the list. In this case, Anything that could have vocal in the track name, like choir vocal or BGV vocal, that I want to have a more specific name, I put it above the plain vocal keyword in the list. Now, it's important to think about this not only within the group, but within the sort file as a whole. Again, the vocal keyword is a good example here. When the sort algorithm finally reaches this keyword, the keywords to match are very broad. If the track has VO or VX in its name, it will be matched. These are not case sensitive either. However, for this sort file, it's not a big deal because this is one of the last keywords in the entire file. The last two groups are not that big. Therefore, if the track that I'm looking at has a match with something else in the file, it has probably been found already. It's already gone through all the other keywords. That means I can risk painting with a broader brush now and use keywords like VO or VX. However, let's say I want my vocal group to be sorted first, so I wanted them first in the sort file. In that case, I would probably change these keywords to match to be a little more specific. Particularly, I would just change VO to at least VOC or something like that, and worst case, just write vocal in there. If that sounds super complicated, don't worry. As long as you have some awareness of this, it's going to make your life a lot easier as you customize your own sort files. Okay, just a few things as we wrap up here. First, when it comes to entering keywords, separate them with spaces. No commas are necessary. If you have a keyword with a space in it, use quotation marks to encapsulate it. Now, if you run out of space in the keywords to match text field, like I did up here with the base synth keyword, just make a duplicate right below it and continue adding keywords to match. Next, if you hover over any of the titles, there are hints and reminders of all the stuff that we have covered. In addition, there is a tips and tricks section that covers a lot of this as well. Hopefully, if you forget anything, those are there to quickly remind you, and if you really forget, you can always come back to this video and get up to speed. Other than that, thanks for getting into the weeds of sorting with me. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how everything works now. I hope this helps a lot of you out there save a ton of time getting your projects set up and staying organized as you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in another video soon.